We're joined now by Republican Congressman James Comer, who represents the 1st District of Kentucky. Congressman, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and please know that we are certainly thinking about your community during this devastating time. Thank you for covering this. We really appreciate it. Uh, everyone in the community appreciates the attention from the national media right now. And Congressman, tell us the latest that you're hearing on the ground and some of the stories that ha have really stuck with you. Well, it's amazing. I mean, it's just sheer devastation all around, as you've seen. But uh, the amazing stories that are coming out of neighbor helping neighbor, uh, people that uh, have lost everything, they, they look up and the roof's gone. And the first thing they do is, is rush to their neighbor's house to check on their neighbor or, or their cousin down the street or their family member on the other side of town. I mean, this is a, a selfless community. Uh, it's, it's a community with pride. All these communities that were uh, hit so hard by the tornado, everyone wants to uh, recover everyone that's unaccounted for and then obviously begin the process of rebuilding. It's my understanding that you're standing in a field as we speak because you're in the midst of going door to door or visiting even places, unfortunately, we've seen all too familiar scenes at this point that are doorless, that are wallless, windowless. What are you seeing? What are you hearing most often from the residents of Kentucky? Well, I think they want to make sure that uh, there's going to be help. Uh, they are familiar with seeing national emergencies happen other other places, and they wonder if uh, people are going to be around after the, the newness wears off, after it becomes an old story. And I'm here to assure them that uh, we're not going to forget about them. I'm going to hold FEMA's feet to the fire. Uh, we're in communication every hour with all the local elected officials. Remember, there's 14 different municipalities in my congressional district. 14 different utilities, 14 different water districts. I mean, there's so many different entities that have been just devastated by the tornado. It's going to take a lot of working together uh, on the local, state, and federal level. And I think thus far in the first three days, they've seen it, but this is going to be a many, many months and probably several year process of rebuilding. I'm sure your constituents so appreciate your presence and being on the ground as we've been reporting these tornadoes hit more than 200 miles, more, uh, far more than our cameras would really be able to, to capture. What is it that we're not seeing, would you say? What is it that we haven't exactly been able to, to capture so completely to, to really give the picture to America? Well, Mayfield's terrible, in terrible shape. Uh, Dawson Springs is in just as bad a shape, it's just a smaller community. But there are so many other communities, uh, Princeton, uh, Central City, you, you've got uh, the community of Casey in Fulton County, you've got uh, uh, Crofton in Christian County. All of these communities have been devastated. The people, the residents are without power, many are without water, and it's just, uh, it's a, it's just affected so many. And it, it wasn't just that one line of tornadoes. There were, there were at least three lines of tornadoes in my congressional district alone, which my district covers a third of the state of Kentucky. So it's a pretty big district, but just uh, sheer devastation everywhere you look. And I, I've told reporters over the last three days, I've seen a lot of tornadoes. And you see stories where a tornado will affect one side of the road, but not the other, because most tor tornadoes are narrow. Uh, there's been a lot talked about the length of the tornado being over 200 miles long, but what people don't understand, and you see it there, it's three miles wide. And, and a normal tornado is about a football field in width. This one is three miles wide in spots, and it just unfortunately went through all the populated areas of, of West Kentucky. So it's just uh, a lot more people affected than in that Mayfield area. And what would you say at this point, Congressman, because uh, we spent some time up in Gilbertsville today where a lot of the residents there, or I should say a number of the residents there said they may not even rebuild. And you've already said that this could take years. This process could, uh, there's certainly a long road ahead. What would you say to encourage residents to stick around and to, to endure all that is necessary going forward? Well, I hope they stick around. I'm going to do everything in my power to see that they stick around. One of the challenges we faced in rural Kentucky my entire adult life is the brain drain. That's where we educate our 
local young people in good local public schools. And then once they leave to go to college or wherever, they, they usually don't come back because there are more opportunities in the bigger cities. Uh, you know, we're competing against Nashville and Louisville and St. Louis and Indianapolis in, in, the, in West Kentucky. And, you know, when, when you look at the residents that were impacted, most of them were, you know, retirees or, or were people in their 50s or older. So uh, we've got to focus on getting those people back in the communities. I think the, the people, once they get over the shock and, and uh, stay where, with friends and family or, or in a temporary shelter for a little while, they'll realize there's no place like home and they'll want to come back to West Kentucky and rebuild in these beautiful little communities. No place like home, that's for sure. You talked about the need for federal help. What kind of help do you need right now, immediately on the ground today? We need power back up. And we're dealing with a lot of different utilities. A lot of the main transmission lines are, are just severed. Uh, they don't even know where they are. They're, they can't even find them. I mean, they're just going to have to run all new lines, and it takes a long time. The light poles were all destroyed. It's just a lot of uh, repairing to, to get the electrical grid back up and going in that area. And, you know, we're hearing just terrible reports of it, it could be 20 days before some of these parts of, of Kentucky get their power back. I hope that's not true. And we're putting the feet to the fire. And look, there's utility crews working 24-7. They're, they're coming from other states and all over Kentucky to come down and pitch in and help. And I know they're doing... Uh, as, as good as they can do, but we just, you know, we've got to hope and pray that they can get that power back up sooner because, as you know, standing there, the temperature is dropping about 30 degrees every night. Uh, it has over the past three nights, and it's going to continue over the next week. Uh, in the past, you have opposed big spending bills on, on the federal level, including supplemental disaster relief. Going forward, do you think that this might have you... I don't know, perhaps having a, a change of heart with regard to that at this particular time with your community needing so much help? Well, it depends on what's in the, what else is in the supplemental bill. The Congress has a bad habit of sticking unrelated bills in appropriation bills. Uh, they ha have a bad habit of sticking social issues in spending bills. And a lot of people in rural America just can't uh, stomach voting for something, a, a supplemental disaster bill that has amnesty legislation in it or has uh, funding for Planned Parenthood and things like that. What, what I hope and what I've been advocating for in Congress is that we do what John McCain said and get back to regular order and vote on these bill, these standalone bills. If you saw bills that focused on just appropriations for this disaster or that disaster or this budget or that budget, I think you would see a lot more support for the spending bills, you just so much frustration by members of Congress because if you vote for a bill, you may vote for one thing that the that your constituents like, but you may vote uh, for two things they don't like. And and you know a lot of times the leadership, the Republicans did it when when we were in control, and the Democrats are doing it now. They try to stick things in that budget that are hard to pass, knowing okay, well he's going to have to vote for the National Defense Authorization Act because it, it increases the troop pay, but it also may have uh, red flag laws or, or gun control laws and things like that that don't need to be in there that a lot of conservatives can't vote for. And, and lastly, Congressman, we've heard so many stories about neighbors helping neighbors throughout all of this. And what does it say about the resiliency of, of your constituents? The rebuilding, it's going to, I mean, it's going to take a while. Uh, the, we're already faced with a shortage of building materials even before this tornado came through. Now, at least 1,200 homes in my congressional district are gone. There's no telling how many are going to have to be torn down because they may have structural damage. Then we've got all these businesses that are gone. I mean, it's going to take a long time. Uh, there's a labor shortage. I mean, it, it's, it's not going to be an easy process. But I, I'm confident that when, when people think about it and uh, once the, the initial shock wears off that just about everyone who lost their home is going to want to rebuild there in West Kentucky. It's certainly a resilient community to be sure. Congressman James Comer, all the best to you and your community. So appreciate your valuable time tonight. Thank you for having me.
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.